Hi, I'm Kat Morrell for Third Coast Daily, and I'm here with our dealer and gallery owner, Tori Foliard, in her gallery in the Third Ward. We're here because Tori is celebrating her 25th anniversary in, in the business as an art dealer. You started out as a dealer working out of your home, representing a Wisconsin artist Guido Brink, and from that, over the course of 25 years, it's kind of developed into this, this entire wonderful establishment. How did that happen? How did that come about? When I started with Guido Brink, I had everything in my home, so that was very simple. And then I figured I couldn't go far from home. I had little kids, so the next step was try to keep it nearby. And so I found a place in Fox Point, a small shop, rented it, and after we had two years in that, in that, in that building, and it was a pretty good indication of what I like doing. That's when I moved downtown in 1988, and here I am in this building. But how many pieces are in the show? Well, I think there are about 80 pieces, 67 artists that I've worked with over 25 years. I've worked with all of these people at various times, and they've given me new work just for this show, which is really uh, a special exhibition for me. Um, but I do have, I think, some standouts are in the show. There are a lot of great pieces, but um, we're standing uh, next to one. Um, this is Russ Vogt, who was one of my first artists that I you know, began with in 1988. And actually, I went up to Minneapolis to, to find his work. I'd heard a lot about him. He's a great painter and a, a wonderful ceramic sculptor. Carol Greger is in his uh, mid-80s. Hard to believe this man is painting work like this in his mid-80s. He was also, before this, he, well, he still is, uh, a wonderful photorealist painter. And he can do the most gorgeous panoramic landscapes of the Midwest. He's considered the father of the Heartland painters. He's a really interesting painter. Uh, around the corner is Fred Stonehouse. Uh, his work is always fun to look at, and uh, this one is no exception. He is, he's fascinating. Yeah, and uh, with Fred's work, you never really know what he has in mind, and he, he doesn't want you to know it. It's, it's never supposed to be perfectly clear. That's, the, that's what he loves doing. Would you say there's something like a Wisconsin surrealist sort of underpinning? Oh, so yeah, yeah. yeah. I think there is a darkness to this work that's, but also a mystery that we see in a lot of landscapes and in figurative works of Wisconsin-based artists. Um, but you can see a lot is on his mind. He's had a lot of influences. He's a wonderful painter. Wow. These are two works by Mark Chatterley, a monumental dog and a monumental cat to go with it. And um, he, he's a figurative sculptor that's worked in clay all his life. Um, he does large, tall, elongated figures, but these are so much fun. I just love these. This is Ron Isaacs, a uh, Kentucky sculptor and painter. I mean, this is a Trump Loy, uh, doll dress. Um, it's so beautiful the way he's done it. Uh, people have no idea how they're made, so I'll just tell you, they're, they're very thin layers of plywood that he has adhered together with glue, and then he goes back, sands it, cuts these cutouts out, as you can see, the leaves, and then, I mean, all of this is painted just like a lace and satin. It's gorgeous. It's Another one of my first artists, uh, Leo Sewell. He's a found object assemblage artist. He goes around, he lives in Philadelphia, he's one of my few artists out of the Midwest, but uh, he goes around uh, picking items up out of the trash, out of dumps, wherever he can go, and he puts them together in these really amazing ways. Nothing in this house is new either. <laughs> I went out to see him. Uh, who else in here? Oh, Lori Hogan. I love, love her work. This is uh, just a gorgeous piece, and I think it's been probably most people's favorite as they come in the gallery. There's nothing natural about Lori Hogan's world. And I think she does that mainly because there is a social message that she has, and uh, it's not always so clear until you come up and start looking at these paintings very closely. Nobody's really happy. I mean, this isn't such a pretty painting when you get up. It's, more, it's much more sinister. So here we are in Tory Foliard's office, and this is like a permanent installation of, of works, but it also gives us some ideas about shows that you have coming up. And, and so, Tori, what do you have planned in the next few months for exhibitions? Well, we've got a great schedule planned. Um, the next one is Gladys Nielsen. She's going to be in our June uh, through mid-July show, and she's a really fantastic watercolorist. She will be showing with Terry Kaufman, but also with um, Jeffrey Ripple, who does those really gorgeous portraits. 
So all of them are going to be fantastic. Going into July, we have um, a great show by, uh, that's curated by Fred Stonehouse. It's called The Beast Within for the short, short version of the title. It's really about tattoo art uh, related to animal in imagery. And uh, just for an example, here's one of Fred's um, paintings right here, One Bad Dog. And then into the fall, we're going to have uh, T.L. Celine's uh, paintings sculpture that we talked about earlier. But this is another example of T.L.'s work. Um, this is about to go on loan on a museum tour. Uh, for, for three years, so I won't be seeing this work for a long time. This office is just a great place to look around and really see the artists that I carry uh, and that I've represented for so long. We've got a great uh, group of artists and I'm just so thrilled and fortunate to be working with them all these years. What I look for is really great quality, whether it's a painting or a sculpture. I mean, that is the consistency that I'm looking for. 